Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Fake Nerds Watch for Star Trek Strange New Worlds Season 2. I am Brandon C. McClure, uh, joined on this trek by Ryan Eliopoulos. Hello. I'm back, ready to talk about some... You know what? Actually, I forgot what we were going to talk about today. Well, at, um, tr- something Trek. Something... Um, uh, the new Star Wars is out. Yeah. It'll come to me. Uh, yeah. And Sparks Woody. Uh, I'm just excited to be here talking about that new Ahsoka trailer. This is... Uh, it's a big moment for everyone in Star Wars fandom. It's true. It's thrilling. How anno- how annoyed would would Star Trek fans be <laughs> if this were just a 30 minute Ahsoka discussion? <laughs> That'd be so funny. I'm gonna be I'm gonna above above board with everyone, including the audience. Over the years, I have come up with various April Fool's jokes uh mm. to do on the show, but I have never I've never attempted to do any. No. Uh, one of them was record a show record the a different episode of the mm-hmm. show that we're recording so uh, for example this would be an ahsoka trailer reaction but it would yeah. say star trek stranger worlds and that would be the joke mm-hmm. it was a bad joke so obviously i never approached you guys no, with yeah. it when i was um when i was a teenager i made a fake twilight 2 trailer that got like a lot of views um mm. that was like 15 years ago <laughs> <laughs> i just I thought it made me think of that i thought that was funny that's really funny <laughs> All right. Uh, but yes, we are actually here to talk about Star Trek Strange New Worlds, Season 2, Episode 4, Among the Lotus Eaters. This is episode directed by Eduardo Sanchez, written by Danny uh, Perez, and uh, making her debut on this show specifically, uh, Kirsten Beyer, who has uh, been the creator of Star Trek Picard, uh, showrunner for Star Trek Discovery, uh written many episodes of, of these current era of Star Trek, and this is her first Strange New World. Cool. Uh, she's also written a bunch of comics. She's everywhere. Um, what do we think of this? Who wants to go first? I will. Um, I really enjoyed it. I hope this was not the Ortegas episode, but I thought it was a good episode. Right. I also thought it was another wonderful episode of Star Trek. Spoil it. Spoils, guys. This was the Ortegas episode, so I hope you liked a third of it. Oh, God. <laughs> so... This is not because it's the Ortegas episode, but this is the first episode of the entire show that I did not like. Ooh, just did not like. At all? The, didn't care for it. Sure. I, I will say this is definitely, this is my least favorite episode, but I still, I still, it still gave me like, it's another episode of the week kind of Star Trek show and I liked it. I will say the middle is the the part that I was like, I'm starting to worry about the episode, but I think the the last third of it, like for me, really work with Luke and with all the remembering stuff. But um, this definitely is my least favorite episode. It definitely felt like we are, we are telling a traditional Star Trek story, but it doesn't have the new, the strange new worlds, like code of good stuff throughout the entire episode. The the thing, the biggest problem, and I'll just get right into it. The biggest problem mm-hmm. for me in this episode is that I just don't think the plot device works. Sure. The whole, the whole three of them losing their memory and the enterprise losing their memory. It just doesn't work for me. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's handled very well. I don't think it's written very well. I just don't buy it as a as a device. And I'm just and it, it, and if you're not and if you can't sell me on that, then I'm kind of checked out for the whole episode. Sure, there are good stuff in it. Like I like the beginning with Pike and, and Patel. I, I I think that's a good scene. I like the end with Pike and Patel. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that's kind of it. Yeah, I I definitely I agree with with the plot device i definitely was more just just forgiving of it because it definitely this one reminded me really much of like like a, like a, like a 60s star trek episode sure. where like the plot device is really dumb people forget their things and they go into a castle and they remember it like it is very very like kind of surface level not that you know uh, you need to go deeper for for a once uh, uh one a week type show like this um but like again it definitely wasn't wasn't the strong suit um it is definitely the weakest part of the show like if there wasn't luke if luke the the, the totem man wasn't mm-hmm. A key feature then this episode would be a big dra- drag i think because you need a character like luke to help you go through this stuff um so luckily we had him and i i did like him a lot i thought his story his story and all the stuff about like him not wanting to remember and then like being being thankful for remembering because like that goes into the whole like the message of this episode like beat you over the head it's like you know the memories they make they're part of your story and i'm like that is really beautiful you need to say that line directly <laughs> um but that that's that is star trek for you but like i definitely hear everything you're saying brandon i won't i won't fight it i'm just i'm just a little more forgiving because it is a 
big silly space kind of thing. Sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sparks, you've been a little silent for the past couple of minutes. You really like you'd like this episode, yes? Yeah, I did. Uh, do you I mean, like, I'm not gonna like go to the map for it or anything. I, <laughs> I, I just, I didn't have any, I, I, I didn't have any severe problems with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think like because it's swinging for less than like the previous episode, I criticize it less. Sure. Like, you know, I criticized the previous episode more because it was trying to do more. That's fair. That I didn't yeah. feel like it hit the mark. And this one, the bar is lower. So I'm like, yeah. This, you know what this <clears> feels <throat> like? And this is not to knock like all, uh, like a bunch of other Star Trek shows. But, like this one did feel like a more traditional Star Trek episode. Whereas I think Strange New Worlds has been really good about being a episode of the week, but having really strong character stuff. And this episode does still have really strong character stuff. It is just like the overall plot of the memory stuff is kind of is kind of weak. Um, so it is like, like you said, man, like, like if you're kind of like not with that from the beginning, it is kind of a hard episode to navigate through because it is the whole episode. So like, I, I, I feel that, but like, again, uh, I just wish this were an Ortega's episode. Cause like, I love following her even without her memories. I'm just like, ah, oh, man, you promised me something. And then we didn't get that. That's a bummer. Yeah. I'll put it, I'll put it this way, which is that, um, I think the memory thing of like the crux of it being Pike recognizing how much Patel means to him. Yes. That that works for me. Yeah. I'm like, that's yeah. that's fine. I understand that that's the point. What I think bothers me about it being the Ortegas episode, clearly, in in light of that, is that it is a very simple gimmick. It is a very simple trajectory for Pike and the crew of what they will do and get their memories back and all that. We spend so much time on it that I'm like, we could have spent less time on that because I get the idea of what we're going for. Yes. And more time on Ortegas. We spend a lot of time with Zacharias, King Zacharias. <laughs> and I'm like, you know... Yeah, that kind of so I, better. I brought up Kirsten Byer a, a lot because I wanted to make it clear that I actually really like her. I like her comics, uh, her Star Trek comics. I've, I felt are really good. I really liked her previous episodes that she's written. She wrote um, probably one of the best episodes of Star Trek Picard season one, which was Stardust City Rag. Um, it's a really fun episode where Picard puts on a really shitty French accent and tries to do a heist in a, in a casino. And it's great. Um, and it's just kind of a, bummer to have such a be like oh see kirsten byer i'm like oh okay i i I like her i mentioned before she did an audio drama uh between two characters star trek card that i really liked and so i'm like here we go another kirsten byer episode i'm into this and then have it kind of show up as like a wet rag for me was it is disappointing uh more than anything yeah i the thing that that kept me going through this episode um it is again like all of these all these actors are incredible uh they're all great all the chemistry between them whether they they have the memories or not i think they're all great Mm -hmm. um uh i think i think the 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 core of the episode being like the the surface level memories you will forget but the things that are true to you you will remember and i think most of that stuff just really works for me that's that's very much feels almost like fantasy more than sci-fi and that's just like a vibe that i just dig with and i really again you brought the pike thing with patel i love that i love the doctors like I, f- I i feel like she's my friend like i want to help her that's yeah. not really sci-fi but that is like that is like cheesy like star trek fun and i'm i i just i was able to vibe with all that stuff or again like i didn't i thought the memory stuff was kind of lame but like i was able to navigate that through the characters and all the things they were going through and i i really liked it i'll i'll put it <clears throat> I'll put it this way of um, the memory thing. My big problem with it is that it's inconsistency. Yeah. Uh, and I understand that they say like, you know, Chapel gives some kind of explanation along the lines of like, there's no pattern. There's no clear indication of like, who's going to who, get who, who gets it quicker or anything like that. And I'm like, yeah, but that really just feels like an excuse for different people to fall for it at different points. And like, it's to get rather Spock than like and Ortega's together. Well, this yeah. is like, you know, like when it starts, I'm like, oh, is it going to like it's hitting Lawn first because Lawn is biologically different. Mm-hmm. And so like, it hit Uhura because she hurt because like I, I thought she heard it. Yeah, and then yeah, it just turned like, to be radiation. So it yeah, 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 yeah. That, yeah, yeah. A, that is a one little thing of like, we just target who the script. Well, I'm like, and like all getting down to Ortegas, and like when it hits Ortegas, it hits Ortegas like a truck. Yeah. There's no progression. It's just like Ortegas has Whoa, gone full why am I here? into like, why am I here? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. moment she hears the first indication of it what's was, going it on. was a little, a little dramatic. And, um, and, the, and the thing the, to bounce off of that real quick, these sparks is the thing that the, to the speak to the inconsistency thing when it's meant. It said that like when you sl- when when you sleep, you forget everything. But then this dude comes up and he knows everything. He has all the answers for our characters. And I like the character, by the way. Luke, right? Is his name? Yeah. yeah Luke. Um, I like the character. It just I just kind of felt like 
the memories that they lose are really inconsistent. I'm not well, quite sure. You didn't you didn't see the videotape that he watch watches when he wakes up in the morning from Adam Sandler, where he explains <laughs> all of their history from the point that he can no longer remember, so he understands how the village works. Rom memento. But there's no. But there's no. There's no like I get I get like they have the totem thing that's supposed to tell them the whole history, but then he like gets up and he's uh, so okay. So in the scenario that they kind of set up is that he will wake he will wake up with everyone else and and realize oh my goodness where am I who am I what's going on here and then look at this totem and get the whole story and be like okay so this is the story and then he's completely confident in the whole thing and I'm like the the way you showed us this memory loss thing with Pike Laon and 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 Amanga is that it's basically a reset button every day. But these people that I'm seeing being Kalar don't feel like they're being reset. Well, here's the thing, because again, they're like, and again, this is all this like, it's inconsistent per character, but like from Luke's perspective, he is a mem he is a Kylar. So he has grown up with this being a core memory of his. So he grows up and he knows this is a part of his life without really knowing that, why. That's what I was going to say is yeah. like that, you know, this has been, this has been, many 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 generations on this planet mm -hmm. with this being the situation so there's an amount of like adaptability in a sense to this is how life is and i think when you grow up in it your predilection and connection to it is going to be a little different so like what's mm -hmm. core and true is probably different than what's core and true to starfleet mm -hmm. showing up mm -hmm. you know like he 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 believes in this sense of like people inside are special and people outside are not because that's, that's the subjugation that, that makes sense to him. It's been there the entire time. The thing, no the, reason to even question it. So all that makes sense to me. The thing that, the, that I don't hundred percent track, but again, like I'm kind of, I can kind of wave away is, is Zachariah being able to take over like the entire settlement. If like he, if he's a new person, wouldn't all their core memories be, he was never here. That's the only thing. Like I thought the Zachariah thing that's was, I, I thought that part was the most silly and like, you know, they're just like all LARPing, which again, that's, well, and that's all the Star guards, Trek. And all the guards have helmets. All the guards have helmets. Yeah. So I'm like, they were, oh, he did say they were cool because we we swapped weapons. We gave them a bunch of weapons. So I guess they just like being fascist, which is which is fine. Um, but that is the most inconsistent thing for me is, is like the idea of Zachariah being the bad guy of the episode. I'm like, he's just kind of lame. So the episode is a sequel to the very first pilot of Star Trek, uh, The Cage, where we first meet oh. Captain Pike. Um, in that in that episode, we have that episode begins just after that mission that he talks about on Rigel Seven. Um, so Jeffrey Hunter, at the time playing Captain Pike, has this kind of like crisis of faith, and he's like, you know, I don't know what to what I'm doing in Starfleet anymore, sending people to die. It's a very cerebral episode. Honestly, pretty good. Um, and so cool. the Jeffrey Hunt, so the Jeffrey Hunter Pike. So we actually do see. Rigel Seven in that episode through a kind of a, a flashback device. Um, I'm not going to complain that it looks nothing like it does in this episode because yeah. it doesn't, but whatever. Um, but uh, I do, I kind of, I do kind of appreciate the attempt to return to Rigel Seven and kind of play off of that plot device from that very first pilot because there was a big kind of push in the first season as it was coming out to be like, hey, this is the longest. Uh, pilot pickup in history, 60 years uh, since yeah, yeah. the pilot was made because the joke was the cage is the pilot for Strange New Worlds. So that's all kind of fun and good, yeah. but I don't understand, but I, I don't think it's justified enough within the episode to return to Rigel 7 sure. uh, because you're just, you're, you're not really doing anything with that moment I, of the original episode. I, 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 I I agree and don't and disagree, mm -hmm. but like I only I only agree because like going back to it, like the character like Zach Zach as a character just kind of sucks. So like yeah, well, I'm I'm thinking like, oh so Zach's the character from the '60s show who got I'm like that guy <laughs> he's lame. <laughs> I don't care. Um, I like, in fairness, in fairness, I like I like Pike at the end where he's oh, yeah. where, you know you know the Pike when he's talking like I do like the narrative. I, I know I've been hard on the episode, but there are things I do like here where like specifically um, when he's talking to zach at the end and he's like i mourned for you i was i like i didn't leave you behind because i thought you were alive mm -hmm. uh, i thought you were dead and like that shows who captain pike is he's a person who who bears the weight of every crew member on his which ties into the beginning where he's where he talks to una about why he broke up with patel 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so I do oh, like he, that. he did that thing he does. He did the thing he does. So I do I do appreciate that, and in that way there is kind of that there is kind of that through line from the original episode. It's just a little weird that it does. There's just a little not meshing happening thematically, not visually, obviously, but thematically that's a little strange. I think that part of the problem is that even as I say this, I'm about to disparage for this episode something that I think is the best part of the episode. But um, it's it's because it's trying to be the Ortegas episode at the same time. Sure. Like, Zach is an entirely uninteresting character because there's just not enough there. Yeah. And if the episode were more dedicated to this sense of Pike's previous mission and what that means to Pike, but what it means to Zach too. Yeah. And that was the point of most of the episode that, and like him figuring out that he's in love with Patel. Like if those were the things driving the episode, then all of it justifies itself. They could but because yeah, yeah. it has to pivot to also using this opportunity to be about Ortegas, which again, I have to stress is probably my favorite part of the episode. Mm-hmm. Um, it, <laughs> it, it pulls away from that story. Yeah. Um, because it's trying to be two things at the same time. And and I will highlight there that I, I think the entire sequence from Ortegas getting from the bridge to their room and recognizing they are the pilot to saying, I'm Erica Ortegas, I fly the ship, after so many times of having them say it in a way where it's like, yep, I fly the ship. But now being like, I fly the ship. Yeah. Uh, that really works for me mm-hmm. as an Ortegas moment. I really, really like it. I like how it's highlighted. Yeah. I just, it doesn't uh, organically fit with everything else that the episode wants to do. There was a moment um, when Ortegas was going to go on the away mission and she and she was going to pilot it and then Pike takes it away from her. And Sparks and I just went, oh man. And then her episode wasn't her episode anymore. And I'm like, that sucks. And again, well, I still so- like the episode, but I'm like, every other character gets a full episode. That's not cool. Well, so what's so weird about about the fact that this is also kind of an Ortegas episode, and this, it's very disappointing as such. Um, the episode opens with a with a with a with a captain's log from Pike, and then about ten minutes into the episode, the episode opens again with a pilot's log from Erica. After, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I credits. didn't like that either. Yeah, because it does the captain's log, the opening stuff, uh, opening intro, new cap, new log, pilot's now Ortegas, log. Yeah. and I'm like oh, this is an Ortegas episode. And like, if it had stayed that way for the rest of the show, I'd be down. Because the thing is, usually, not all the time, but usually when the other characters get their episodes, like their specific like story-focused episodes, most, if not all of the episode is from their perspective. Yes. Sure. In the sense of like, we are following them into scenes. Like, we'll get time with the other characters, but it's from their point of view. Um, or like v- very closely related to their point of view if they're not in the scene. I mean, the Una and Lon ones were both their, their episodes. But... Sh- Structurally, whenever these care, whenever these, oftentimes now, obviously there are there are exceptions to this, but oftentimes when you are doing an episode from a character's perspective, say for instance the Laon episode from last episode, uh, from last week, um, you will have you have that character do the opening log, um, and so like that's, that that is not always the case. But whoever does the log is always consistent. So mm-hmm. opening with and this is just it's just it just throws me uh i just watched it again like an hour ago but like it throws me because it's like we open with the captain's log from pike then we do the pilot's log a little bit into it after the intro and then we end with ortega's doing the pilot's log again but like it would be better if it would be better if the captain's log wasn't there and it was the pilot's log because then you have the actual structurally speaking that's a better format for the episode yeah, because just, that is the episode of these episodes. That's the format of these episodes, right? But because thematically, what they want the episode to at its core be about is about Pike and Battelle. I honestly you I have wonder. to start with the Pike and Battelle stuff, yeah. to make that happen in the episode because it can't happen after he's left on the mission. Sure. So, like, I, I get how it, it, it is that they're trying to do two things at once, and, yes. and because they are, they execute on neither at full capacity. But thematically speaking, as Spark said, uh, the 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 thematical the, the 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 thematical crux of the episode is is the Pike and Patel relationship. So ending it on the Ortega's um, uh, 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 lesson, the Ortega's through line, the Ortega's lesson, 
know, doing like, you know, I'm Eric Ortega's I fly the ship moment as she throws the thing is cool, but that's not yeah. what the episode was about. So I think I think there's two things either happened. Either this was two separate episodes that they had to merge together, or they or this episode was written and they realized they had the whole season done, there was an Ortega's episode and they had to throw her in. Because <laughs> either way, really, it doesn't feel like she would this was dedicated to her. You know what's really wild is this was the first clip we ever saw of Star Trek Strange New Worlds. That oh, yeah. opening that opening pilot's log, not a Strange yeah. Worlds, but season two. Uh that opening pilot's log from Ortega's was the first thing we, we got of this season. Crazy. Which got everyone really hyped because everyone's everyone really wanted an Ortega's episode. And so we're which just all, like all the more makes it feel like this was a response to fans wanting an Ortega's episode and more than uh, yeah. they failed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean she she does have she does have like a great moment, but like it is unfortunate like every other character gets to have like a full episode. And like, hey, you could have a third of it. I'm like, ah. well, I'm like, and like, like, say it's the Ortega's episode, and what's her full arc? Her full arc is that she remembers she now, how to fly. No, 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 no. It's she now feels better about oh. saying, "I fly the ship." She's more confident about saying a line. No, it's not even confident. It's about it's about like they they've essentially painted the character into like one of the reasons why she's like, "This is all I do. I fly the ship." Yeah. Because now she's like, "I'm satisfied that this is all I do. I oh, fly no. the ship." Um, <laughs> I and, don't want to move on. And it's <laughs> like that kind of sucks. No, yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> That's a really good point, Spark. <laughs> really think of it. I that never way. want a promotion ever. <laughs> right. Like, uh, uh, you know, you know what? Maybe the landing party's for losers. Yeah. I fly the <laughs> ship. And I'm like, oh, man. That's, that's um, a bummer. <laughs> and like, and like the, there's like so many people taking, like, Una takes it away from her at one point. Like, hey, I used to fly the ship too. And like, that's true. Right. Like, she Hopefully she was the right. helmsman of the original of the but first it, But episode. it like highlights that she didn't need to be there. Yeah. Which Ortega's? is the whole thing, like, like by Una taking over when they said, like, this is why we need you up on the ship. You can't be part of the landing party. Una takes over and it's like, oh, so like I could have just gone. Yeah. Like Una could have just been piloting the ship while I went on the shuttle. This like these these maneuvers we had to do while they were down on the planet was kind of bullshit, except when it got bad. Um, mm -hmm. But they didn't know it was going to get bad. Yeah. So it was kind of a bunch of horseshit. Again, it's a thing of like, the script dictates who gets what, who gets it and when and how hard. Um, that's, that is well, kind of like, a and like, that's weird too, because like, it feels like that's done on purpose. No, 100%. Because like, why else do you have Ortegas other than like to keep her in a scene, I guess. That's it's o Ortegas is forced to get up from the ship by Una and she's like, oh, okay, I guess. Considering that Uhura had it on that deck, like everyone, like and just how how viruses spread, like it's again, it, it does no, there's no consistency. It doesn't like not that it, it needs well, to like, all the time, it, but like it's well, because yeah. like it's not viral. It's just it's, it's radiation. It's just radiation, yeah. and like I guess everybody gets hit by radiation poisoning different. Yeah, that is yeah. <laughs> I do. I really like the scene though when um, Ortega goes up to the uh, 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 what's it called where, where all the the people live the where their the home deck. Is. the deck yeah like the right. the 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 uh whatever it's just, there's a, it's just a, there's a specific thing just a deck whatever uh the, the people's logs um uh everyone's just like walking around there's a dude huddled in a corner uh uh church uh church just walks up and then it's like goes to the side and i'm like man people are messed up like this 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 thing is just gonna fall out of the sky in a minute were you looking I, for like crew quarters yes thank you because the oh, computer okay. says it so you you said you called chapel church and i think that's very funny oh yeah same thing yeah yeah <laughs> Churchman. It's the same. It's the same relative thing, and I just yeah. thought that was my cute. memories. The radiation. I really, um, but I really like. I, I honestly <laughs> kind of expected for a moment when it cuts to her coming out of the the room, and she's like, "I am Erica Ortega, so I fly the ship." I thought like there'd be one or two crew members who, who say were like, it too. "No, no, no." Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be pretty funny too. But they like by her doing it, like connect the dots on who they are, and I'm like, "I am Uhura. I." <laughs> Trans yeah. <laughs> transmit signals from I'm the ship. I'm an engineer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, a, a brain awakening. Yeah. Um, th there's there's actually because you brought up Chapel. This is just a fun little note that I want to bring up. It's always kind of surreal to me to see Chapel and Una in the same scene together. It doesn't happen quite that often, but it's always so surreal to me because they're played by the same actress in the original series. <laughs> oh, sure. Weird. So I'm looking at them like, man, Majel Barrett would be so proud. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Her two separate identities. <laughs> Her two, the two characters he played, she played on the one show. Equally kindly thought of in in the original viewing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, yeah. It just. 
I think that they botched it on trying to do an Ortega story and by trying to shoehorn it into a story that was clearly not about her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, she didn't even get, that's the thing. Like she didn't even get to go to the planet. Like it, it's, it sets you up. Like all these other episodes set you up. And like, if you didn't set me up, I wouldn't feel so like negative about it. And I'm not negative in like a er way. Just I'm like, I wanted a whole Ortega's episode. No, it just kind it's of just does feel like it, does, character it, it does feel just a little like, Hey, Ortega's fans, this one's for you. Sort of. Yeah. Drive on now, by. Now that said, like, I, I do think her, a triumphant piloting through the asteroid field is pretty cool. I mean, like I think the visuals of the show in general are really good, but oh, yeah. I, I think this one, especially just watching the enterprise fly through the, the and then um, use the phasers to cut through the asteroid was really cool. Mm-hmm. All good stuff. Um, Spock making a blunder of himself being like, there's let's go in there's, there. There's yeah. just, there's a better version of this episode where like what's happening with Pike down on the planet is secondary and you barely get any snippets of it. It's not as important. And that you stay on the ship and it's, it's driven by, or like what I thought was going to be the most interesting thing they could do. And they did almost nothing with it, which was Ortegas uh, and Spock both losing their memories and Ortegas being like, I think I hate you. Um, and like, that's what I, that's what I'm feeling right now. And he's like, emotions are not facts. And she's like, you son of a, <laughs> uh, and like that, that could have been like, you know, we have that all the time on Star Trek. Like, I, I don't even have to watch a lot of Star Trek. I've watched Strange New Worlds and I know this happens all the time on Star Trek. Like the, the crew's kind of fucked. And now it's down to two. Yeah. These two are trying to like piece it together, but also because of things that happened at the beginning of the episode, a little bit pissed at each other. So and that's that's how you get like something meteor and also of, spock doesn't do anything but that's how you get something meteor out of the premise of this yeah um and they didn't even do that yeah i, I love the way spock sits in a captain's chair though i do too oh it's just very 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 He's just like what's up stern. i want to go um yeah spock uh he's got uh ethan peck is this his name uh he's got his he's got the uh leonard nimoy mannerisms down mm-hmm, mm-hmm, uh you yeah. can definitely see the through line there um what did i what what okay so pike on the planet oh you know what i'll just say this i like the uniforms um when we go down to the uh the, when we go down to the planet the the klr uniforms mm-hmm. look really cool yeah they're wait, color Kilo. color coded to what your job is wait wait sparks this has been ringing in my head for a while what oh he's are... What are the 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 robots the robots in Orville? The, the Orville robots. The mm. species of robots in the Orville. Their names, Sparks. I, I know what you're talking about, but like you watched that more recently than I did. Is it the Kalar? I will Google it for you. <laughs> because no, that's very funny if it is. But like I I don't I don't actually know if I'm Kalon. sure Kalar. Kalon. Kalon. It is close. Kalon. Kalon, okay. Um, you saw me saw you saw my 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 internal self going through the filing cabinets. Like, what's the name? What's the name? Yeah. I always I always imagine. I don't watch a lot of SpongeBob, but I always imagine that's my brain. The going through all those filing cabinets in his brain. We threw out his name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one. Yeah, that's um, a good one. So, I am who I am. This is a Star Trek show where I have been very consistent in talking about uniforms. Uniforms are one of my favorite things in all of Star Trek. I adore them. Um, I am very picky about them because I love them so. And I will say this with love. Zach is in the wrong uniform. He is wearing a current uh, Starfleet uniform. He should be wearing a Starfleet uniform from five years ago. And he is not. Mm. And that bugs me. Mm. Take that Um, costume department. Either he should be in the Discovery uniform, which is fine that he's not, or yeah. or he should be in a variant of the uniform from that first pilot with the stupid turtleneck. Yeah, that that, that, that look nice. How, how many did it say? What was it? Three years or how long Five. has it been? Five. Five. Damn. Why would he still like, be wearing this perfect uniform, you weirdo? Take it off. Wear some <laughs> barbarian clothing. Is he <laughs> is he washing it every day? I sure, there's not a lot of water there. I don't know. Um, cause he, cause he's in a current, so this also kind of confirms, I think what, what a lot of people have been suspecting that this season of Star Trek Change the Worlds takes place in the same year as the first. So 2260, um, so five years ago, it'd be 2255, which puts it 
just before Star Trek Discovery, which is the first episode of Star Trek, the the cage. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So he should and so okay, you guys don't care I about this. But so confused. What what why? Well, maybe I can I, I don't we don't need to go over. <laughs> I, that was very confusing. That's fine. Um so for people who are watching this because I don't think you guys really 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 need to to care honestly. Um the so in the first season of Star Trek Strange New Worlds, there is a picture of Pike and April shaking hands, and they are in a version of the first ever uh, Starfleet uniform from the cage, the, the the solid gold with the turtleneck. They are in a version of that, like a Strange New Worlds version of it, establishing that that uniform exists in this continuity, which it should, because that was from the episode. Mm-hmm. So they... And the only thing that kind of screws that up is the Discovery uniform, but that screws everything up. Um, so either he should be in that uniform or he should be in the Discovery uniform. Zach should be. But whatever. That's my uniform talk for the episode. You'll get a you'll get snippets of it for the rest of the series, I'm sure. That's Brandon's uniform minute. <laughs> uniform five minutes, let's be honest. <laughs> uh, uh, and Bang is in this episode. He's always, he's always delightful. Again, yeah, I, the- I just... I- I really like the. I feel like I know how to heal people. I just need to re. I just need to remember. Remember that was that was nice and all. You know what I had a problem with? Yes. Um, I had a problem with the other with Luke, um, alluding to having lost a child, and Umbenga's like, "Cool, man. I have no <laughs> idea what that's like." <laughs> You're so right. <laughs> that was last season. I never think about her. <laughs> <laughs> like like that that didn't pull him into a, like a core memory even a little i was like okay we'll i'll just never I think about what happened to characters i guess i can remind me i don't remember and i just watched that like omega had his daughter who yeah. she was sick and he kept her like in between space and time and, and, oh, in the, in the, right. the day, and then she in connected the transport with, like, the astral thing and she would live a better life there so he had to let her go that's right that's right and so he is <clears throat> for him while she lived a better life than she would have otherwise he essentially lost his no I, yeah yeah i remember that <laughs> so like <laughs> you know who did remember that the writers <laughs> that's so yeah, he, true <laughs> he kept her in the transporter buffer that's a good episode that's the um that's the fantasy episode yeah. um yeah i really like that one um yeah that's a really good point sparks i didn't really think about that uh i do do you know know why Mbenga is fighting a lot in this season? He did the beginning in here. He's got like action scenes now. Do you know why? Because he has a, a black belt and wants to use it. Yeah, actually, Mbenga is like really good at Brazilian kung fu or something like that. And like the, oh, actor, the actor, Hell the, yeah. the actor is like really good at it. And was and they went through the whole first season. Like we never gave the student action scene. We have to rectify that. So they gave him two so far in the new season. I love it because he's a doctor. Uh, and in this in this episode, he's like, yeah, you bring a doctor. Uh, you bring a doctor for military experience. That sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just it, it bummed me out because like as it was happening and I realized what Luke was saying, I was like, oh, man, this would be such a perfect opportunity. To, oh, like, I have, feel something. Have Mbenga reference the loss of his child, which was not that long ago. Brandon just specified that it's in the same year. Yeah. As season mm-hmm. one. So, yeah. Um, I don't know. That could have been cool, but nah. Yeah, that is a bummer. It's just one of those things where, like, most of the time, I feel like they are thinking pretty, pretty solidly about like the arcs their characters have been on on the show. And I was like, man, I just feel like once that kid story was done, we just don't have them being a talk about that or think about it anymore. Yeah, it's just not part of who he is. To the degree where Ryan forgot about it. It's true. <laughs> I wonder if we're going to get an Mbenga centered episode because we still don't know the origin of the of the eye thing that he does to look with Laon. Mm-hmm. I wonder if we're gonna get. Uh, either a on Mbanga episode or just an Mbanga episode, and that will carry on the, the 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 storyline from the first season. Well, we'll get at least a third of an episode. <laughs> we can guarantee <laughs> a third for every yeah. for every. Oh, yeah. Um, Pike's decision to, I guess, not really break up with Patel, but because they're not technically a couple, they're just because Patel's like, I don't even know. We we don't even know what this is yet. Mm-hmm. Um. Which is a nice cheeky callback to the fact that Pike slept with what, that that queen from the planet in the clouds. Remember the? We, um, we, 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 he doesn't know what you're talking about. Exactly. <laughs> um, and, and you don't remember that Sparks? Remember the episode with the kid with the with, with the the planet that murders the kids? Oh so yes. Okay. Live? Yes. And like she, he slept with the queen. That was yeah. an away okay. mission. We don't talk about away missions. It's um, like Vegas. Yeah. 
So yeah, so I kind of like that we're seeing the the ramifications of like you know the Pasok comes kind of comes back like um, verbally because he she he's actively pre- uh, preventing Patel from getting promotions that she deserves. For example, for Commodore. By the right. way, any Star Trek fans watching this can tell me the difference between a promotion to Commodore and a promotion to Admiral because like I don't get it. I'd love to know. Um, and so I like that Pike kind of takes that on to himself and and says like like I don't want to sabotage your career. The like if Pasak has it in for me, if whatever, just like don't don't ruin your career for me. He's putting uh, yeah. himself on the sword, but he shouldn't be because that's like dumb. No, he's 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 like he's doing like the nice guy thing. Well, like, like she's she's bro, she's she wants to be with you. Well, like, more importantly, you know. Una points out that that's the thing he does when he when he connects too much to someone. It's the hedgehog. And he's like, it's, I don't do that. It's a hedgehog. Do I do that? It's, and she's like, Yeah, you do that. Christopher yeah. Pike is gingy, is what we're saying here. Um, Brandon, in terms of duties, oh. Star Trek's Commodores are given expanded responsibilities, but still serve actively in the field, unlike the sedentary duties of an admiral interesting so they're they're out in the field being an admiral as admirals like you're behind a desk okay can someone then can someone tell me why jordy is a commodore even though he's on an active he's not actively serving in starfleet and uh not an admiral because i feel like with that explanation jordy should have been an admiral in star trek Picard. well well you get one google per episode (laughs) well that would be because jordy just can't be an admiral like we can't allow it we can't allow it (laughs) I feel like the writers of Star Trek Picard, as much as I'm happy with the season, Terry Metallus and co, um, uh, we're, we're just like, yeah, uh, Commodore sounds cool. <laughs> it does sound cool. It does it's sound a cool. cool. Word. Um, anyway. Uh, I've I never, really yeah. like Mattel. I, I really like their relationship. I, I'm glad that this wasn't, um, like, if it was going to be a, like, prolonged thing, that's fine. Like, I'm glad this episode didn't start that way and then we didn't get a finish for it in this episode. Mm-hmm. But I really like, like, the thing that I learned in this episode, Battel, is that uh, that I love you and I shouldn't push you away and let's be together, please forgive me. And I think that's great because uh, Pike is, he's generally an honest person, except for, like, when it comes to, like, obviously, getting really close and push people away. But, like, I think uh, I think it was really, really nice and seeing them kiss and, like, this is a commitment and it's going to be hard. But, like, it, that's what people do when they're in love. They yeah. try. And it's really sweet. It's difficult for captains to be a couple. I also really appreciate that uh, we had speculated during the trial episode, during Una's episode, that Battelle was the rank of captain but didn't have a ship. This mm-hmm. confirms that she does, in fact, captain a ship. She she does have a ship, um, yeah. which I which I, I I quite liked. And she's also a captain of a Constitution class, which means that she is, has a high standing within uh, Starfleet. Yeah, I hope, I hope um, we see. I hope we see. More I'm sure we see her at least once more. Yeah. More smooches. Yeah. So far, we've seen her uh, more than the first season, which is nice. Yep. They've they found more excuses to put that lovely, lovely actress in more episodes, which I'm grateful for. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Anson Mount does a really good job with his performance in this episode, regardless of how much I think the episode dedicates too much time to it. Oh, yeah. I agree. Or well, not enough time, depending on which way you wanted to go with the story. Yeah. Um. Yeah, the uh, the the old dude, he's pretty good. I like him. Luke. Luke. Like Luke. 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 Yeah. Oh, oh, another thing about this episode that really that really bugs me. Um, for the most part, for the most part, I think Star Trek: Strange New Worlds is pretty good with its use of the volume, or the AR. They can't officially call it the volume. Um, their AR wall. Yeah. I think this episode is their worst usage of it. Um, it felt very you. you I could feel the wall around them at all times and the exterior shots. Yeah. And that was a bummer. I was, I didn't, I, I didn't audibly say it, but I was going to ask you spark. Are they filming on the volume right now? Cause I don't know. Like I haven't like looked behind the scenes if they use, and they're using AR. So it's, you know, it's off brand IMAX. So like, yeah, I could definitely tell like, they're definitely yeah. throw some snow on them right now. And I'm like, no, yeah, I got, I got, it, it didn't look like awful, but you, you, you can tell, you can definitely tell. And the tell for this episode. And I don't think it's no, I don't think you can normally tell because I, didn't really feel this in last season when they used it for an external snowy planet, which was the um, Gorn, ep- which is the Gorn alien episode uh, where they did. Re- re- but you can tell because like the seams are fuzzy as if they'd gone in by di- and digitally uh, it kind of erased the line between where sure. the, where the set ends and the AR exit uh, begins. And then 
the castle just isn't 3D enough. It just feels flat in the background. Like a map painting, almost, yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, you need to just, like, put more rocks on those lines. Just put more rocks <clears> in front of it. That obscures it. Rocks. Yeah. More rocks. And so they they so Star Trek does use the does use the AR well pretty frequently since its invention thanks to the Mandalorian and of the most the most like the most Strange New Worlds uses it is during its um um engineering scenes and the cargo bay scenes that beyond the fence is the AR wall um so that so and I I think that's pr a pretty effective use of it it feel it feels very wide and very open. Um, but here I wasn't, I just wasn't crazy about it. It really, it really hurt my, um, kind of suspension in the episode. Sure. Yeah. I get you. That's all I got left. <laughs> no, I think that, yeah. Uh, I think this was a, definitely not a stellar episode, but like, you know, I still, I love, I just love f watching these people do things. I just, I just like them. I love, I just <laughs> like, true. they could honestly, they could just do anything as long as like the script is good enough. Like I know yeah. they will sell the hell out of it. Yeah. Um, and they haven't for, for, you know, one and a half seasons now, like they haven't given me a bad episode. So like, if this is the worst that we can get, baby, we're still golden. We're still golden. I, I certainly hope it is the worst that we can get. It's not yeah. to say that this is a bad episode. I mean, I, I'm not crazy about it, but it, it's yeah. definitely the weakest for me. Um, I, I think like you kind of got to go, is it the weakest in the show? Sure. Is it the weakest in Star Trek? Not even close. No, no. Spock's brain still exists. Um, that's the easy answer. Um, uh, yeah, there's a there's also a line real quickly that I want to. <laughs> Pike turns around. It's really funny actually. So Pike turns around when he's when they're in the the prison the, when they're in the cage. And he goes, "This is a cage." Yes. <laughs> Almost kind of winks at the camera like, "Oh my gosh." Yeah. Uh, I I, all the. <laughs> <laughs> yes yes <laughs> um okay oh um L, when when lawn was bleeding out and they kept saying you know just you know in the morning you don't even remember that she's passed she's like i really don't want to die y'all yeah. like I, that was really funny yeah like luke you're so insistent come on yeah i mean this good stuff I, I i do what? also think like just for the story they were trying to do in the episode that they fumbled the ball on luke at the end um because, like, I'm glad that he gets inside and he's like, I was wrong. Thank you for letting me remember these things are important. Yeah. And I just didn't feel like that had the weight that it should have. Yeah. Um, considering the way that they played his conviction in the scene. Um, where, like, they wrote Luke in such a way where when he's having the conversation with Mbenga, where he's saying, like, I, I scratched the names off. I don't know why. Yeah. Um, I don't want to remember. The where, pain is too where much. They're, yeah. Where they're kind of because he's like, would it it wouldn't change my sorrow? Yeah. Um, it feels like they're trying to convince you that he's right. And then you get to the conversation later. and He's like, no, nah, I was wrong, but I won't get into that's, any more that's words the thing about where it's, it. Yeah, it's like, no, your pain makes you who you are. And I'm like, that's true. But also Luke, Luke seemed he was like he was pretty happy to, you know. Like that's that that is I think that's more of a personal ideology type thing. Um, and, but I think yeah. like but I, but the point but the point like that it felt they wanted to make with when he's inside because he could have just not been inside the castle at the end and like you would have left him to that point. And it's like different strokes, different folks. Yeah, hundred um, percent. But because they have him inside the castle at the end and he does remember it, he's like I was wrong, which means like everything about their society is everything wrong. About their he's culture like, is wrong, like yeah. uh, it's important to remember these people. It's important yeah. to have those connections and everything. I don't think they hit that. Yeah the way they needed to for it to be the point of yeah we're going to take that meteor off the planet because right if he's not in there yeah. making that point it's kind of wrong for pike to take the meteor away because their feeling is it's okay to not remember that's that's and that's a culture thing that's the thing if if this were something that happened 5 years ago the meteor later 5 years ago it's different this has been here for this, this what thousands of years mm -hmm. there are people who entire lives like whether it's right or wrong, there's a caste system on this planet that has rich people and poor people and remembrance and all that stuff. Like, if people are happy not remembering something and they can live that way happily now that they're not being oppressed anymore, I think they should be able to. You know, now that they're free and they they can choose to do like that's cool. But it kind of feels like no, you had you should remember you, right, because you like, should live you should live your life that way. I'm like ah, let, but choice. I thought though, kind of it's tough. It is this is one specifically is a little tougher than I don't think ones. I don't I just don't think they gave it the full thought and yes. might of what that meant yeah um, especially for like turning luke from the one conversation which again i feel like is written to convince you yes and then 
to the later one of like, nah, forget all that. I was wrong. <laughs> yeah. Our thousands of years of tradition and culture are like, and you, people are making you forget things. Well, but like, you know. but and like, it's fair because like, it's a fair discussion because like, ha half of the population can remember and half can. Yeah. And or or whatever the number breaks down to. Yeah. And it, it becomes one of those things where like, sure, maybe it's easier for you to forget and like you're okay with that, but like. Does that mean your children should grow up in a society where they're forced to not yeah. remember things that could be important? And like the point, the point being, I just don't think that they hit the weight of his change of heart the way they needed to, to sell the point yeah. of the change in their society being worthwhile and that they should take the meteor and the only thing do it out into the meteor asteroid. The only thing that makes me go like, no, they need to get rid of that because it looks like they were like slave labor, basically. Yes. So as, so if, as long as they can like, if they want to live their lives regularly and still forget things, but that's that's for a whole other episode to, to talk about. Yeah. But, so, okay. If we're going to, by by the logic that Sparks is talking about, which I agree with Sparks here, um, the, the, why didn't the species evolve? If this meteor landed thousands of years ago, wouldn't their brains theoretically have evolved to the point to accept so to to, to uh, resist kind of this uh, memory tampering? Yeah, I mean, I mean that's the evolution of that planet at that point. That doesn't that doesn't fit the story. And like, I don't know, I don't know if like, I think making the meteor thousands of years old is a problem. You should have been something well, that happened like, but even sooner. then, like you know, like your ev your evolution is limited in the sense of. You know, in, in a thousand years or so, uh, if radiation is the cause, radiation is going to exist no matter what. And there's only so much you can evolve against it. Like your brain might adjust to having a greater sense of core, like what is a core identity stuff and holding on to it. Like we said that it seems they are more comfortable with it. That can be an evolutionary trait. Yeah. But to like full blown, like not even be affected by it is probably not possible. Hmm in this hypothetical totally bullshit science fiction story but like the the you know the way the way our evolution works like you know we can evolve but we have to evolve within limits of what we can do physically or it has to be on a much longer timetable we don't got gills you know like we're talking we're talking millions millions i don't got web hands yet <clears throat> i want to i want i want to be a duck man oh uh, anyway anything else I wish Ortegas had a better episode. Yeah. Me too. Her, st her stuff was great, but like, again, like every other character gets to have a dedicated episode. And I was like, uh, this could have been it too, man. But ultimately, like Ryan's right. It's just, you know, it's a good crew and good performances. And we got a little moment with everybody. So that's all I can ask for. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do. I do still really like this cast. Um, I mean, I tune in weekly for this cast, not necessarily this, the story. So um, the story is you really tune in weekly the because it says Star Trek. No, hey, if it wasn't good, I wouldn't. I didn't watch Discovery Weekly for years. Sure. All right, it's true. Um, mostly because I didn't have CBS All Access. But you know what? We're not going to really think about that. It's a new era. <laughs> I couldn't, therefore I didn't. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, um, let's call uh, call it there. Yeah. All right. So that was uh, Star Trek: Strange New Worlds. Fake nerds watch uh, episode four. Um, next. We'll be back for another episode next next time, uh, episode five. By the previews, it looks like a Spock centered episode. Should be should be fun. Spock, I'm ready. Um, you know what that cool. means? It's also probably a chapel centered episode. Ooh, take me to church. So this is <laughs> so but just by the preview. I don't know how much of of any of the trailers for Star Trek: Stranger Worlds you saw, but nothing. Uh, you know what? I'll let you guys experience it then. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. I'm actually going to watch it in 45 minutes uh, from the time of this recording. So, yeah, we will see. We will see. All right. So, so, so that'll do it, guys. Of course, this is Fake Nerds Watch. Uh, if you're interested in more Fake Nerds Watch and you're not just interested in Star Trek, we have just recorded our second episode for Secret Invasion. It's up right now. Um, you can check out the Secret Invasion discussion where we where we've talked about uh episode two and episode three will return most likely for four and five and then once again for six so uh a little uh let you guys know what we're doing there that does, that does seem the likely trajectory because we definitely aren't returning for episode four <laughs> that's the truth <laughs> i haven't seen it yet is it not good well no but like it's 30 minutes what 
Yeah. It's 30 minutes. It'll yeah. say 38, but like take Trailers. out the intro and the credits at the end. It's 30 minutes. Yeah, it's a shorty. You know what? To say what you will about 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 Strange New World, at least they're consistent with how long their episodes are. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, they're almost an hour. Hell yeah. Um, I won't I won't get too too into it, Brandon, but like this episode should have been part of the last episode. Like there just should have been a mix of these two episodes, and that should have been episode three. And then we should be having a totally extra episode of of more development on stuff. Well, we'll see. We'll see what we'll see what happens when we talk about it. Um, there are plenty of other shows you can check out on this on this channel if you like this video and you subscribe to this channel, or if you subscribe, most of these people if you're listening to the audio, most of these shows are available in audio formats, such as Basement Arcade. Basement Arcade is not available in audio formats. That was a horrible segue. Um <laughs> that is not available in audio formats. That would be the can... stranger audio podcast. <laughs> listening to the press, press buttons for video games. Just hearing like video game sound effects and like, <laughs> oh man, that looked bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but but Make Facebook, it, I can, <laughs> but Facebook, I pause menu, pause menu is available in audio formats. Uh, so both of those are our video game shows. You can check them out on various formats as well as um, Animation Station. Uh, Mythalanius has some new episodes coming and already up. Uh, the Real Score has some new episodes coming. Um, Fakner Book Club has some new episodes coming. Stay tuned for a lot of that stuff. Hey, um, the, the but the Mothership show, the show where all shows come from, Fakner Podcast is changing. If you have not listened, if you have not seen our last step, our last episode where we talked about Mission Impossible Five and Six, Rogue Nation and Fallout, uh, we made a big announcement. The show is changing. So this coming episode, it's just news, baby. It's just news. Well, I mean, we'll hang out a bit in the beginning, but then after that, it's just news and we're out. So, uh, and that'll be in the morning. And normally I tell you guys at the end of these episodes, hey, join us every Sunday night uh, for Fickner's Watch. Now I will say, join us every Sunday morning for Fickner's Watch podcast. Yeah. Get a Fickner get podcast. a get a coffee. The show the show that all shows came from now has no other shows on it. <laughs> <laughs> it could just be just be a show. Uh, you know what? At least we, at least we, I'm selfishly, I'm happy we kept the, 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 the weekly roundup because just doing the news would honestly get a little boring for me. Um, sure. So we'll, so, but yeah, so yeah, so, uh, so uh, the, the, so I'll, I'll from, from now on plug Cinephiles, which is our kind of brand that exists on the Fictor podcast um, where we discuss movies. So if you want to listen to our, listen or watch our movie reviews, check out the Cinephiles. Otherwise, if you want to hear us talk about the news, go to Fickner Podcast every Sunday morning live. Um, and then after that on all the feeds. Cool. Uh, we have a T Public, we have a Patreon, Conversation logo is available. By the way, Conversation, that's another show I didn't mention, but new episodes coming. New episode out now with Rachel Strange. That's a really good episode. Go check out that episode. Actually, yes, go check out that episode. I really enjoyed doing that episode. Rachel Strange, the Narrative Labyrinth Podcast. Go check it out. And uh, up upcoming episode. Go check that one out when that's out too. So cool. Uh, but that logo, by the way, it's available at T Public. Uh, uh, links below, linked in the description. Check it out. Uh, you can also, but you can find all these things. Everything that I've told you is all on my website at fakenerpodcast.com, uh, as well as blogs and things like that. Um, cool. Uh, Fakener Podcast on all the social medias. I'm at BC McClure on Instagram and Twitter. You can also find me writing for CBR.com, AtomicGeekdom.com, and KaijuRamaMedia.com. And Sparks, where can people find you? Uh, I am Sparks Witty, and I fly the ship. You can find me at Sparks Witty on Instagram, Twitter, S P A R K Z Witty. Ryan, um, I don't remember where you can find me, but if you, but if, but I feel in my core because I have an Iron Man tattoo. It probably involves Tony Stark in some way, so I'm gonna guess it's something like DJ Tony Stark six one six. If I had to take a guess, yeah, that well, okay, because right. you wrote it down, so. Um, <laughs> yes, <laughs> like, yes! A, like a like a tattoo. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. All right, guys. So until next time, we see us. Oh, here we go. Live long and prosper. <laughs>